What's up guys? It's Chad with Living the Van Life. And right now, I'm standing out here on this vast tundra in the Arctic of North America. It's currently minus 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, join me on this journey as I drive 3,600 miles across some of North America's wildest and most remote terrain where I tackle the Dalton Highway all the way to the end of the road here in Dead Horse Prudhoe Bay, Alaska into the extreme winter. It's the farthest north that you can drive in all of North America in the dead of winter time. Let's do this. Well, this is where this journey begins. It's currently 5 a.m. It's Tuesday, February 14th, 2023. I'm here in Bellingham, Washington. It's probably going to be a month by the time I return back here. It's a lot of time solo on the road. I have spent the last two weeks prepping the van mechanically, getting all my gear sorted, making sure that all the T's are crossed, the I's are dotted here on the van. I spent the last 365 days mentally preparing. I've been thinking about making this trip all the way to Dead Horse since a year ago after making my trip to Tuk 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 in the Arctic Ocean. This isn't just a leisurely drive. This is a lot of miles. It's a lot of covering territory in extreme conditions. It's a lot of time solo in remote places. You're constantly on edge. What could go wrong? What will go wrong? How am I going to overcome it? How am I going to keep myself safe? How am I going to get myself all the way there and all the way back? A lot of this is really learning to push outside your comfort limits. Any good lessons that are going to come your way are going to come your way while outside the box. It's where you learn the most about yourself and about this world. Here we are at the Canadian border. This is the first leg of the journey. We're gonna have a couple thousand miles worth of traveling to do in Canada before we cross the border back into the United States in Alaska. We're gonna cross through here and continue our journey. Well, we are officially across the Canadian border and into British Columbia. British Columbia is a ginormous province up here in Canada. There's lots of territory to cover as we make our way north. At this point, I am aiming for Prince George, which is just under halfway up British Columbia. That'll be a good stopping point for the evening. Be able to hunker down as we make our way north. British Columbia, the gateway to the mountains. This is where the journey turns and heads north into the mighty Fraser Canyon as we wind our way up the Trans-Canada Highway northbound. Close your eyes, hear the voice within calling This heavy load got under your skin Howling, you got the white knuckles Now this isn't just making the drive to the furthest north in North America, this is also making that drive in the dead of winter. It turns out that February is the coldest month for that region. They've seen well into minus 40 on record temperatures. Why do it in the wintertime? 
In the summertime, it's driving some gravel roads with washboards and potholes. I feel like everybody can do it in the summertime. With the snow laden land, the ice laden land, it's the conditions that add the extra layer of intensity on top of it. You get to see planet Earth in a different manner than most people are willing to go out and do. It's a test of will. It's a test of tenacity to see what you're willing to endure. And there's a lot to be taken from pushing through and making an accomplishment such as this. And that is what I'm looking forward to. Well, after four hours and 58 minutes of driving, I am rolling into Cache Creek, British Columbia, about 199 miles down with 2,350 miles left to go. We are just starting through British Columbia and we got a long ways to go. Time behind the wheel, time on the open road, lots of time to think and imagine what you can do with life. That's what these trips are all about. Moments pass, make this one count. Untie why? Well, there ain't much time left to figure things out. Well, the sun is setting on day number one. I've still got a couple hundred miles to make it to Prince George. These highways are pretty wide, well-maintained, and clear of any sort of weather conditions. So I think I'll go ahead and push into the night. That will be a good stopping point for day number one. Go ahead and hunker down there for the evening and I'll have a fresh start in the morning. It has been one hell of a long day of driving. According to the GPS here on Gaia, it looks like we've been driving for nine hours and 50 minutes to get from Bellingham, Washington to Prince George, British Columbia, which is just shy of being the halfway point up British Columbia. I've got a spot here at a truck stop that I've pulled off to. I'm gonna hunker down here in the van, and get ready for bed, and get a good night's sleep so that we can make another decent push up through some territory tomorrow. The key to getting a good night's sleep I have found recently is taking some decent supplements. I've got a sleep supplement that I make up into a drink. And then also I've been taking some ashwagandha and magnesium. And man, I tell you what, on these long trips where you're going out into some stressful territory, where things are remote, you're by yourself, there's a lot of pressure on yourself mentally, getting a good night's sleep, I find that makes such a huge difference. That's part of my routine here in the evenings before I crash, especially on these bigger road trips where all hands need to be on deck mentally right here. Well, yesterday was a nice sunny day. Looking outside here this morning, it looks like some clouds have socked in. A little precipitation in the form of snow. It looks like outside right now it is 25 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 10 degrees Celsius. Might have a little bit of some gray snowy conditions on our hands for today's travels. Well, definitely gotta say I'm gonna miss the drive in sunny weather. Today's socked in and snowy. Definitely makes for a different day of driving, but that's all part of the adventure. That's just inevitable when you decide you wanna drive to Alaska in the wintertime. That's all part of the adventure.
the van topped off with fuel before I start the trek north. Fuel prices right now here at this Esso station in Prince George, $1.75 per liter, and that is Canadian funds. As we continue to head north, I expect that those fuel prices are gonna continue to rise as we get into those remote areas. That wind out there is chilly with that moisture in the air, snow coming down, it's cold on the ears. Now that the van is all fueled up, I am going to swing over to Canadian Tire because these guys up here just have different gear for these kind of conditions that I'm heading into. Things like windshield washer fluid. Down in the states in the region where we're from in Northwest Washington, there's no need for extremely cold temp windshield washer fluid, so it's just simply not available. So I like to swing into Canadian Tire and kind of browse their sections for anything that I might find useful that they actually stock in their stores for these kinds of conditions as I begin to head north. Ice scrapers down in the States, at least where I'm from, are nothing like this. So to get something heavy duty that's gonna withstand the conditions up there, this right here is where I like to go. Let's keep in mind the Sprinter van is giant tall, so to reach up to the top of the windshield, we need something that is extendable. On this side right here, of course, you've got your heavy duty ice scraper. Over here on this side, you've got a squeegee. And going north, where we get into the dry snow that blows up on the back of the van, it's nice to have a brush to brush that snow dust off the back of the van. That ought to do the trick. Oh my goodness, it is freaking cold outside. How do you guys know when it's cold outside? When you go outside and it's cold, and then you're looking for a hoodie. If you don't already have yourself a live in the van life hoodie, let's just take a moment and talk about it right now. Guys, live in the van life hoodie. I'm always bragging about these things because honestly, they are super cozy, they're super comfortable. They're not one of those sweatshirts that, you know, after you wear them for a few days, they're just not as comfortable anymore. These things actually last a long time and they're warm. Like, it's keeping me warm right now because it's cold outside. You can get these on over at the Living the Van Life website, www.livingthevanlife.com. We've got stickers over there, we've got t-shirts, we've got hats, all sorts of stuff. And as I like to say, guys, do me a favor. Don't be a fool, be cool. Livingthevanlife.com, head on over, check it out. With that being said, let's get back to the action. We got a trip to the Arctic to make. Okay, we are on the road, headed northbound. Next stop, that's going to be the start of the Alcan Highway. temperature right now is 28 degrees Fahrenheit which is going to be about negative 1 negative 2 degrees Celsius snow is coming down the roads are a bit slick from here as we head north we're going to be heading up into a bit of a mountain range as we cross the Canadian Rockies down into Dawson Creek so things could get interesting here we'll see what happens I have now climbed to about 2,959 feet in elevation. This is the Rocky Mountains, but you can tell this area and this region gets quite a bit of snow accumulation throughout the winter season. Now, a lot of you guys might be wondering, what is the difference between this trip 
and the trip that I did last year up to Tuk 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 and the Arctic Ocean. Well, the main difference is going to be the destinations. And now there's two different purposes of why I've wanted to accomplish each of these. Turns out that Tuk 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 is the only place in all of North America that you can actually drive your vehicle from mainland all the way to the Arctic Ocean. It's also the furthest north that you can drive in all of Canada. However, there is the opportunity to take it one step further and that is by taking the Dalton Highway up in Alaska all the way to Dead Horse, otherwise known as Prudhoe Bay. That ends up sitting on the globe 40 miles further north than where I went last year, making it the furthest north that you can drive in all of North America. Now there is one caveat to that, which at Dead Horse, although you're within just a few miles of the Arctic Ocean, due to the oil fields that are up there on the north slope of Alaska, you're actually not able to drive directly to the Arctic Ocean in the wintertime. That's why I chose last year to accomplish and tackle the Arctic Ocean, and this year we're going for the furthest north you can drive in all of North America. It also turns out that that is the start of the infamous Pan American Highway which runs from Dead Horse Alaska all the way to Ushuaia in South America down in Argentina. Now that is one goal that perhaps could be on the near horizon for here on living the van life. But nonetheless, we are headed north into some extreme winter territory. At this point, I'm gonna hit the hay, get a good night's sleep for a good push for the rest of the way up British Columbia here tomorrow. All right, guys, we'll see you in the morning. Waking up here this morning in Dawson Creek, British Columbia. The temperature right now is sitting at about 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about zero degrees Celsius. But I expect that those temperatures are going to be dropping as we continue further north. After driving for 15 and a half hours, 742 miles since I left Bellingham, Washington, I am now here in Dawson Creek, British Columbia. It's about the halfway point, maybe a little bit further up the map on British Columbia. And this is mile zero of the world famous Alaska Highway, which is a 1,390 mile highway that stretches from Dawson Creek all the way to Delta Junction up in Alaska. This is about where the adventure truly begins as I make my way north into Alaska. got 1,951 miles to Dead Horse, Alaska. It's time to get this show on the road. Let's head north.
I tell you what, stretches of the Alaska Highway like this, the road just goes on and on and on. It's just kind of flat, rolling hills. We've got big Rocky Mountains off to my left and nothing but the open road ahead of me. It's interesting landscape. It's always intriguing to me to see how it changes as the miles click by. Fort Nelson, British Columbia, in the north of BC. We're looking at $2.26 Canadian per liter. Fuel prices are going up. Now one common question that is asked often here on these videos when I travel into these extreme temperatures, how I keep my fuel from gelling and what kind of additives I add. Truth be told, all of the fuel sold here in Canada and beyond north is already winterized at the pump so there's actually no need to add any extra fuel additives when traveling into this part of the country. Just a couple hours ago, we were on long, straight, wide open highways with not a care in the world. Now, the highway has wound up into the northern Rockies of British Columbia, and things are a little bit different now. It's narrow, it's curvy, the mountains have closed in tight, and there's compact snow and ice on the road. This really feels like we're getting into the roots of what the Alaska Highway is all about, and the remoteness the further we head north. Well, I went ahead and decided to call the night a little bit sooner than what I had anticipated. It looked like there was some weather starting to come into the region. And I came across this spot here, which is called Toad River. And it looks to be a fairly popular trucking stop for the truck traffic that is passing through this region. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that as a sign as it's a good spot to hunker down. Way out here in the remote territory of the Northern British Columbia Rocky Mountains. As you can see in the headlights here, there is snow falling down, so I'll get a good night's sleep and be able to start the drive back up tomorrow morning. So, this is gonna be home for the night. Well, for this trip up to the Arctic, I have taken a little bit of a different approach to my meals. 
And with so many long days of driving, I wanted something simple. I decided that I would like to do some meal prepping. So I spent a good solid day planning some simple and healthy meals that I could put together before I left Northwest Washington and that I could easily heat up using the three quart instant pot that I have here inside my sprinter van. I can put about a cup of water down in the bottom on a trivet and then I put that little pot and pot system down in there and I steam my leftovers for anywhere from 12 to 15 minutes and I have nice delicious food that I have all prepped myself from scratch while it is cold and wintry outside way up here in the Rocky Mountains of British Columbia. Basically what I've done here is cooked up a bit of a stir fry. I've got some chicken, some broccoli, some mushroom, some shallots, some peppers, and some peas that I cooked up previously and I put that with some pre-made rice and just reheated it. And just like that, we've got ourselves a nice home cooked meal right here in the Sprinter van. And after a long day of driving, I'm looking forward to a nice warm meal. is definitely hot. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Waking up this morning, the temperature outside is zero degrees. That's about negative 17.6 degrees celsius when i parked here last night the temperature was at about 30 degrees and quickly dropped by the time i went to bed it was nine degrees fahrenheit here inside the van it is a nice cozy 60 degrees fahrenheit thanks to the diesel heater making things nice and comfortable through a good night's sleep from here, I'm gonna fuel up the van at the Toad River Outpost, and then continue my journey north and west through Muncho Lake and onto Liard River Hot Springs. The journey continues onwards and upwards. Out here on the Alcan, you don't pass up a fuel stop without stopping to make sure you're topped off because you don't know where the next open fuel station is going to be, especially where the weather and the temperatures are extreme. So, got the van all topped up. We're about to hit the road, continue north and west. As I continue my trek through this amazing scenery, I'm completely at awe of what this highway actually is as it meanders its way through these Rocky Mountains. And when I think back to the history of how and why this highway was ever built, that this is the connecting overland route from Alaska to anything in the rest of North America. There's only one way in and there's only one way out and that's through the Alaska Highway. It's mind-blowing to me what the people went through back in the early 40s when they set out here to build this. The weather is so socked in here, the visibility so severely flat. It makes it very challenging to see where the road ends and the ditch begins, but this is part of the adventure, so we just keep on trucking. 